conclave, a part of the Canam webinar series. It was a three-day conclave. We've had two fantastic days with five sessions over, six sessions over. Today was another the sixth one, and another two. Uh, to, uh, this is the seventh one, and we have another eight, uh, another hour from now. So thank you all for being part of all of this. Uh, just a quick introduction to who's Canam. At Canam, we've been giving career counseling for students headed to Canada, and we've been pioneers in that, been doing it for almost a quarter century. Students, please do listen to the videos on our website to hear what top universities and colleges have to say about Canam counselors and services, and also what the universities and colleges have to say about their own programs, their scholarship options, and uh, what efforts they are making for the special COVID-19 situation. Uh, Canam is very special to Canada. We send a large number of students. Anurag Sandhu, our CEO, is an ICCRC member, Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council, which means that he's a regulated Canadian government licensed consultant for guidance on visa and permanent residency processes. Uh, students who are looking for guidance for their study permits certainly should be seeking only licensed immigration consultants for their uh, assistance. But also many students, in fact, most students headed to Canada are looking for a study in Canada and then uh, work experience for the post-study work experience that Canada offers leading to permanent residency. So you need to know what are your various permanent residency options. You need to plan your career smartly, uh, which means if you're looking for guidance on that, you should obviously be seeking guidance on what are the various permanent residency options, which are the provinces, which are giving provincial nominee programs, specifically for international students, what are the other special uh, uh, programs which you can choose for your profile, uh, what are the kind of skills that are needed in different regions, or, and, and what are the kind of points you could get for different programs that you're studying. All of that you can seek only through a licensed immigration consultant if you're seeking advice. And at Canam, we can claim this rare combination of long and licensed experience of promoting Canadian education, Canadian careers, and pathways to permanent residency. Do not seek visa assistance or PR guidance from unlicensed agents. Canam is one of the largest overseas education consulting companies with a network of offices in over 30 locations across India and in Toronto, Canada. We give career advice to over 2 lakh students and professionals each year and process about 75,000 applications for university and college admissions in Canada. Our artificial intelligence driven platform iApply has contributed significantly to these numbers this year and our grateful thanks to our Canadian universities and college partners who have totally been supporting us through this pandemic year. And we've managed to roll out about 90 odd live webinars with question and answer sessions and shot for about 150 odd videos with them. And that has helped us to reach out to such a large number of students. In fact, I would say that even this conclave by itself with its eight hot topics has, has led to pre-registrations of more than 10,000 students. So it's been a great year. Thank you all. Uh, our free services include live interaction with delegates through webinars, visits, uh, web fairs, conclaves, and all of that, career counseling, admission services, getting application fee waivers where possible, visa guidance, providing scholarship options where possible, interview preparation where it's needed. So why this conclave? As leaders in promoting Canadian education for two and a half decades, this conclave by Canam is a logical step towards removing myths and clarifying a lot of frequently asked questions that have been confusing students all along for a lack of regulated guidance and licensed consultants in India. Our grateful thanks to all our panelists for taking time out of their zones and sharing this responsibility with us in reaching out to students and parents on these eight hot topics related to Canadian education. Promoting Canadian education with a global career perspective, we are focusing on Canadian education and skill development planning for Indian students and working professionals. And the topic for this session is options for working professionals in India seeking skill development in Canada. And our panelists for today, I'm calling out the panelists in alphabetical order. Brooke Klassen, Manager International Student Recruitment, Royal Roads University, Victoria, BC. Brooke has been working in the international education industry for over 20 years in both the public and private sectors and has a lot of experience helping students choose their education pathway in Canada. 
She believes that every student has a unique journey and it's her pleasure to help them explore their options and choose the one that's right for them. Thank you for being here today, Brooke. Panelists two, Kim, Executive Director, Professional Applied and Continuing Education PACE, the University of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Kim is Executive Director of Professional Applied and Continuing Education at the University of Winnipeg. She holds a Master's in Leadership and is currently working towards certification in Executive Coaching. She has collaborated with people from all over the world. She has an extensive local, national and international network in industry and in executive and professional education. Kim's first trip to India was in 2012 when she attended a Can-Am fair and she's been back for over 10 times then. She looks forward to when she can return. Thank you for being here today, Kim. Mariama Thomas, Consultant International Enrollment Management, Northeastern University, Toronto. Mariama Thomas is part of the International Enrollment Management team at Northeastern University. She, she oversees the graduate recruitment and enrollment services in Asia, Africa, Europe, and Latin America. She holds an MBA from Wayne State University in the USA and has over 20 years of experience in international education, both in India and in the North American region. Thank you today for being with us, Mariama. Our panelist, fourth panelist, Mark Haringa. Executive Director, International Education at North Highland College, Courtney, BC. Mark has been involved in international education for the last 30 years, specifically in both the British Columbia and Ontario systems, as well as internationally in Japan and Thailand. Mark completed his Master of Education in International Education from Monash University after completing a post-baccalaureate diploma in Asia-Pacific Management at Capilano University and Bachelor's Degree at the University of Victoria. Mark's recent work experience includes the British Columbia Center for International Education, BCCIE, Vancouver Island University, Durham College, and North Highland College. Thank you for being here today, Mark. A panelist number five, Michael Kali, uh, Manager International Recruitment and Admissions, BCIT, Burnaby, BC. Michael has worked at BCIT for over 12 years and directs all aspects of international recruitment and admissions for the Institute. He has traveled extensively in India and many other countries. He leads a team of international recruitment specialists and international admissions officers who welcome over 1,000 new international students to BCIT each year. Thank you for being with us today. Our panelist number six, Ziping Feng, Director of International Marketing and Recruitment, Thompson Rivers University, Kamloops, BC. Ziping leads Thompson Rivers University's international student recruitment and global marketing team. Originally from China, Xi Ping completed his undergrad study in Canada at TRU and a master's degree in France. Xi Ping started working at TRU in 2006 and has since supported thousands of international students to fulfill their dreams to study and work in Canada. Good to have you with us today, Xi Ping. A big thank you to all the panelists and to the students, please continue to ask your questions. Click on the chat button, type in your WhatsApp number, name, and the city that you're in and along, along with your question. An expert CAN-AM counselor closest to your location will contact you. And if your question is absolutely unique, we'll pick it up for one of the panelists to answer. The rest of them will be answered by Team can -AM in the next couple of days. So thank you all. And with that, we may move over to the conclave. So the post-pandemic recruitment efforts using technology and various social media platforms through its vast reach has already seen us connecting to the diverse student population across regions and age groups. We've had a large number of working populists who shifted to the work from home format, mostly online, reaching out to us, seeking career upgrades. Now, Canada is seen as a safe and welcoming, safe and welcoming for young and skilled people with work experience. However, the message most education agents give to working professionals is, you have a study gap. You won't get admission. We at CANAM know that's not really or absolutely true. There are so many options for working professionals. Our panel today is all charged up to let you know what are the options and what are the myths. My first question goes to Mark. Mark, what would you say to working professionals from India wanting to study at NIC? How would your faculty react to students with work experience? Thanks, Kianga. Yeah, that's a it's a great question. Um, just want to check that my uh, sound is okay. 
Yeah, perfect. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. This is great to, to have so many students here that are interested in studying Canada. Um, really, I guess if we're talking about working professionals, we got to remember that Canadian colleges were built for this type of student. It's exactly the type of student that we're looking for and that we work with every day because we have strong connections to industry. Um, and we have a practical academic focus, right? So we are ready to build job ready grads. Um, another thing is that employers in Canada really are looking for work experience, regardless of whether it's from India or, or anywhere else in the world, is they're looking for the, that type of student when they come into their office and they start talking to them about what they've done, different things like that, they have a higher uh, opportunity for working with that student for looking for employment, whether it be part-time employment while studying or post-grad uh, employment. Um, we're also very interested in, in essentially talking to students about how they're gonna package their India work experience. And we need to work with them through our career offices and, and that kind of thing to package that work experience, bring it to the fore and, and then package that together with whatever program they're taking at NIC or at any college and determine what to how that work experience fits with their new program that they've just been taking. So for example, just a couple of examples, in the area of digital design and development in the post degree area, for example, like we'd be looking for, we have an, a number of students, things like software engineers or IT managers or computer programmers or interactive media developers. That's the kind of student that we're seeing in our program so we work with those students, develop their skills in, in digital design and development, but we also work with them to be able to uh, network with employers and, and, and determine how to use their work experience in the, class, in the classroom, but also when they're talking to employers. The, uh, on the design area, we have uh, things like web developers and graphic designers. Uh, they bring experience with them to the classroom and uh, IT grads with design interests, right? Marketing managers, social media specialists. So we work with all those in our digital design and development, or we look at something like business, hospitality, culinary, where we have global business management that is great for career change. So we have Students coming from an engineering background, they're looking for something. They, they actually want to work in, in business or marketing or HR. So we have a lot of engineers in that program that, that decide to change focus. They've had a career. They like it. Maybe they want to develop their skills in other areas, and that's what we help them to do. Another area is in something like accounting, right, where we have a pre-professional accounting post degree program. That accounting program is great for students who are coming, really it's built for students who are coming with an accounting background and accounting experience. We've had some excellent success with those students getting out, getting into some really good accounting uh, uh, firms and, and having success that way. Things like culinary and tourism are really good second career options for many students that have a background in say business or something like that. And they're looking for really employment ready types of, of uh, programs that are gonna get them in a job like that. Um, particularly as we come out of that pandemic, those areas are gonna be hiring uh, big time in the next two years, right? So that's something that people have to think about. So industry is hungry for young professionals. Right? They're looking for those young professionals that are eager to demonstrate their skills and advance their careers. But students need to remember, you have to network from day one. You have to start building your network as, as soon as you arrive and leverage that with your faculty. Thank you, Mark. My next question goes to Michael Gali. Michael, at BCIT, you value working professionals to be a part of your student body. What do they bring to the table? And how do they perform in their programs? Do give us some examples.
Sorry, had to have a mute there. Thank you, Gaga, and um, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, the average age of a BCIT student is around 25 years of age, and I would say about 30% of our students come out of high school. So the rest of them are working professionals who are returning to upgrade their education to improve their career options. So working professionals are a vital part of the, uh, of the BCIT DNA, and they are, they are key to the success of our education model for several reasons. Uh, first, I would say working professionals bring a lot to the classroom and are really the, a key to the success of our professional education model. Their prior work experience enriches the international experience of our local students. Um, in a program like international business management, uh, international working professionals enhance the networking options of our domestic students. You know, they, they bring to the classroom a knowledge of, um, of their country and the needs of, uh, of business in their country. And that, uh, in a program like international business management, that's a key, key to, um, to understanding how the classroom theory turns into real world practice. Uh, generally, the experience they bring to the classroom, uh, to the groups they work in the class, motivate. It also motivates their class classmates because they establish a mature attitude, uh, a mature attitude uh, towards study, and make it more professional. So, um, you know, they feel that it's not just an extension of high school. Uh, this is where education meets the career path. And uh, working professionals bring their work experience to the class, of course, and offer more real world perspective to group projects. At BCIT, about half of, their, of the students' time is spent on uh, group assignments. So, you know, when you have working professionals participating in groups, they bring that unique and important perspective to the group. And that helps all of the students. All of the students benefit from that. And uh, finally, I would say they also help improve the cultural diversity of our classrooms, which is a big part of our international, uh, internationalization initiatives. And speaking from personal experience, when I was in university doing my master's, um, those of us who had come to the degree with, our, with several years of working experience, we had a very different understanding of the theory we were learning in the classroom. And we could share that with the other students. Um, having experienced the workplace, um, the theory that we were being taught and the activities that we were being asked to participate, it made much more sense to us. And we were able to share that with our classmates. So there was a, a definite benefit there. Okay, thanks Michael. Uh Zipping. Uh, Zipping Canada sent many students with spouses and family to study at TRU. What would you tell working professionals about employability after studying at the various programs that TRU has to offer? Thank you, Ganga. Um, I do want to um, use this opportunity to thank older students that participate in this event. I look at the numbers counting amazing, close to 500 and uh, what a turnout. Um, I do wanted to thank uh, to Canam, um, a really good partner of TRU. And uh, if I look back, I know many of the recruiters have been traveling or work with um, Canam for a long time and TRU is the same. Um, look back, probably we have worked more than I would think 12 years or longer uh, been working together. And thank you for sending that many excellent students to um, all Canadian universities and institutions. Um, thank you for that. Uh, my name is Ziping Feng from Thompson Rivers University. Um, for those of you who don't know TRU, we are a public university, one of research institutions in British Columbia. And um, uh, we have been, TRU has been established for 50 years. Um, in the past um, a decade, we had the pleasure to welcome many Indian students to come to Canada and TRU. 
And we do, um, at many occasions, welcome the mature students. They are coming to TRU for their post -back programs or two master's programs. I think while students have many options, they would choose TRU for, um, I think, first of all, it's located in British Columbia. I, and like many other institutions, TRU also located in a smaller community. And that is great for students uh, with families, with was, um, you know, possible with spouse and kids. So where a smaller community do present them uh, um, a safe, uh, environment and easy access to services and a more relaxed lifestyle and also very affordable living. And we all know that in smaller communities, students can easily make friends and get to know people and really uh, uh, feeling the Canadian culture and make community connections. So that's very important. Of course, when students come to Canada, they are looking for their future, develop themselves, you know, professionally, and academically. And um, we're lucky at the university, we have many, many different programs for students to choose from. Um, you know, we have the traditional uh, uh, post back programs in, um, you know, business. We also have lots of in tourism and newly we develop uh, lots of very unique program like economics and political studies and environmental economics, uh, master of education. The traditional MBA, we also have a newly developed Master of Data Sciences. So those programs, we do require students with previous learning experience or professional experience to join us. And uh, what we really enjoyed is the mature students, they know what they're doing. And once you select your program, they come to TRU, they can work with their, with their professors on the academic side. They can work with the event coordinators, the business development uh, officers to develop their uh, networking opportunities. We at TRU, we offer lots of co-op for undergraduate students, but because they were out of high school, they needed to add that working experience. But for professionals, we rec recognize how much strength, how much experience they, they already have. We just needed to help them to polish that. And the, the faculty has doing great job. They organize so many different networking events. They bring the industry to campus. They bring students to com conference, bring students to competition. They, they travel across the country to get to know people. So that's why um, we see very, very great results for uh, graduate students to be very su successful in, in Canada. That's not only because we provide good education, it's really, I want to remind the students is you needed to value your experience that you already have. You just needed the education to get yourself more polished and get to know the Canadian system and uh, get to know the people here. So there are lots of successes um, uh, waiting for students and uh, Canada is a very welcoming country and we do welcome all ages mature students is not a problem the visa application could be a little bit complicated in that case you you I do suggest you go uh, talk to some experienced Canam counselors and they will help you to determine what's your goal and uh, what are your steps to get your uh, study permit to Canada thank you so much Jiping. Uh, my next question goes to Kim. Kim, many of your programs at PACE demand some work experience. What has been the visa success of students applying to PACE at the University of Winnipeg? Many working professionals worry about getting visas for diploma programs as ignorant education agents scare them about getting visa refusals. What is your message to them? This is just a move on from, from what Ji Ping just spoke about the visa. Yes, I, I really, um, I'm really enjoying listening to my colleagues answer questions because I think we're all on the same page. We're all collaborating with each other. We all have different things to offer students. We all have a lot of respect for Can-Am. Um, you know, a trip to India for me would not be the same if I wasn't at a Can-Am fair. Um, even though I don't do like a lot of fairs anymore, I always make sure that I go to a Can-Am fair. So thanks so much. Uh, I just did some look, did some looking into this, um, you know, we do get a lot of applications from India. And I did a little digging into what the visa success rate was, and it's actually very high. 
uh, for our, stu our students at PACE, Professional Applied in Education at the University of Winnipeg. We um, are focusing on the post-degree diploma at the university. And we had 85% um, students got their study permits. Oh, so of those who applied, met all the criteria and paid all their tuition, 85% were approved. Only 15 were denied. So I tell all of you students out there to just don't give up on your dream and your hope. And just, you know, you're, you are needed here. You are wanted in Canada. Employers want you. We, as our, our role as educators is to really prepare you for the workplace. And the employers are very excited to have you. So the average age of denied students was 33 and they had six years of work experience. The ones the average age for students who got study permits was 34 years old. So, and the average age work experience was 9.5 years. So don't think because you have work experience in India and you're a bit older, that you're not welcome and that you're not going to get your visa. I, I really do believe the visa officers are starting to change their perspective on, I mean, I know a lot of us have visited with the high commission. We've had conversations with them about the types of students that we want. We also add in our admissions letter that we actually do require work experience and that our students need to have that. So I also believe that helps a lot with the visa success. And I follow our students, our graduates on LinkedIn. And I mean, I'm always seeing the great careers and jobs that they're going on to. You know, and they're always very excited when they graduate and then they land their first profession. That we are preparing people for professional jobs as well. So that is, uh, so don't worry about your, what's called a gap is not a gap for us. It's work experience. And yeah, just great careers and great, great opportunities to come here. And so I just say, never, never give up on your dream. Thank you, Kim. That was like really myth breaking. Amazing. Thank you so much for that answer. And those are all facts that you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Mariama. Uh, Northeastern University is a top American university with campuses in Toronto and Vancouver. Now your professional master's degree programs have been very attractive to many of our students with a lot of work experience. Here's your chance to tell all the aspiring students, working professionals about your programs and how they increase employment opportunities for your graduates. Sure, Linda. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us for this session uh, this evening. So as we all know, today's professionals need new ways to continuously build and refresh their skills. So at Northeastern, we offer industry aligned programs that suit their aspirations and needs for upskilling. So Northeastern education is always emphasizes on experiential learning that our students with prior work experience have found to be very useful in um, upskilling themselves for career advancement. Um, because mostly students who have a few years of work experience go for a, a master's or a graduate degree when they think they are ready for the next step in their career or uh, they, when they are looking for uh, advancement in their career for the next role in their careers. So we offer many programs that are aimed particularly at lifelong learners that helps them to keep pace with changing workplace demands. And that is something that we have seen so often, the workplace demands keep changing and the employees or the workforce is expected to adapt to those uh, uh, changing needs. So one of our programs, MS in Project Management, it is designed to provide practical skills and theoretical concepts that uh, is required to lead complex projects. Then another one is the MS in Regulatory Affairs. This is the only um, program in Canada, master's degree program in Canada in Regulatory Affairs. And that focuses on the development and commercialization of drugs, biologics, and medical devices. Then like uh, Ganga, like you mentioned, the MPS or the Master of Professional Studies in Analytics, it helps students in applying the principles, tools, and methods of analytics to a project. So that helps them better manage a project. Then we have uh, one of our other programs, which is Master of Professional Studies and in Informatics, which combines um, information science knowledge and technical skills training 
with an understanding of business fundamentals and strategic thinking. So these are all, you know, once you have a few years of experience, these are all skills that you will need to be at the next level in your career. And of course, it is not just for the student's benefit, for as a university and, uh, you know, as uh, the diversity and the experience, like how what my co-panelists have mentioned before, the diversity and the experience that the working professional bring to the classroom is invaluable. So the university stands to gain from this, uh, as well as the uh, working professionals who opt to study, uh, go for a graduate program at Northeastern. So it's a win-win for both uh, parties here. Thank you. Uh, my next question is for Brooke. Brooke, Royal Roads University is a university for working professionals. I mean, that's the tagline and we've always known it as that, university for working professionals. Now, when we tell students that, they're actually surprised because nobody else tells them that. Royal Roads University offers some amazing master's degree options with some internships to help graduates get a foothold in the job market. So why does RRU prefer students with work experience? Thank you so much, Ganga. Uh, thanks to Kanam for organizing this. I think I'm, I'm finally starting to miss visiting everyone in person and leave my masala chai with me here <laughs> having this discussion. Uh, yeah, it, it's really special at Royal Roads. Um, from the beginning, it's, it's, uh, it's a unique institution that has taken a different approach. It's a bit a uh, younger institution compared to different partners. Um, and we do have a lot of programs that are for the working professional. Usually you look at uh, many universities and, and they're kind of created for that more traditional at a high school, going to do my undergraduate degree. And, and there's lots of us who, who do our undergrad and then we work. <laughs> and then later on, we're like, oh, I want to go back to school. So I think it's not necessarily that we prefer work experience, but many of our master's level and graduate level programs do require uh, work experience. And why this is important is because it allows students to bring in their rich career and work experience to the table to have discussions and debate. I think we can all remember what it was like to you know, be an undergrad student. It's very exciting and you're learning things and then you get your first job and you're like, eh. What do I do? You know, it's not, <laughs> the connection isn't always there. Um, and then you start working and, and you start learning. And I think we all start having more questions and we start to realize like what else we wanna learn. So I think being able to bring that into the classroom uh, is incredibly uh, invaluable. Uh, we have a program that's a master of arts in global leadership and it requires at least three years of general leadership experience. Uh, we have an MBA in executive ma in management that uh, requires at least seven years work experience. So we have many students that have 10 plus years work experience, 25 years work experience are coming with children and partners and, you know, starting a new life here. And um, I think as a working professional, we, you know, we're so lucky and honored to have you. Uh, you know, come to Canada and, and contribute to our communities. And as many of my colleagues have said, you have a lot to offer and your experience is very valuable. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, Brooke, tell us about your flagship programs of your, like the hospitality tourism as well. And, uh, and I think you have just another one, which is really attractive to the, uh, I, I think it's about the communi international communication, right? Yeah, we also have a Master of Arts in Tourism Management, uh, which does require work experience as well. Um, it's great because we're located in Victoria. That's the second largest industry here. And, you know, despite you might be like, oh, COVID, I think tourism is probably one of the most, you know, innovative industries and, and they'll be back. Um, and then we have a Master of Arts in Intercultural and International Communications program as well. So, yeah, lots of great options. Great. Uh, so now we have some questions from the audience, which I've picked up and I've like combined them so that more of them can be answered. Uh, and I'll request any of you from the panel to pick on the questions. Many working professionals are in the process of applying for permanent residency, but maybe falling short of points to get invited under the express entry. 
We already have IELTS general scores. Why do universities insist on IELTS academics for us? We hear that RCC accepts IELTS general for visas. Please consider our request. I'll, I'll take that. It's not a, I think it's probably something that all of us have this similar response to, but the academic IELTS is a, is a standard in the industry and something that, that all of us probably have a minimum requirement of. Plus uh, the federal government, uh, the visa office does require uh, through the SPP program, at least the IELTS uh, minimum scores. Uh, so uh, of the academic area. So the other, uh, the, the general IELTS is, is not something that will normally be uh, accepted by any or by most academic institutions in Canada. If I can maybe add, um, and of course it's a great question for admissions teams, <laughs> but um, I also think that you have to remember for most of us, you're also taking an academic program. So you do need academic kind of related vocabulary in English. And, you know, even for us, our domestic students in Canada uh, who have, who are working professionals who have been out of the workforce for 10, 15, 20 years, we actually have um, a program that's all about academic writing because we forget <laughs> and it's incredibly important. So you're still going to have to write papers, do research, do APA format, do all this kind of stuff. So it, it might seem like a, a bit of a pain, but it will help you, really. It will help you. Yeah. Anyone else would like to say something else or add on something to this? Okay. Um, so the next question is, how do student couples with, man with children manage children's education in Canada? Is it very expensive? And how does one apply or seek information about schools? Go ahead, Jiping. Oh, okay. Um, I can answer a little bit. Um, once the uh, principal applicant's uh, study permit is approved, um, um, I think the spouse and children can accompany that student to study in Canada. Um, I cannot say on, on behalf of all school district or provinces, but in majority of the BC uh, public school district, if you're children are at um, a school age, uh, they need to uh, put, uh, attend kindergarten uh, to grade 12. Uh, they can contact the local school district, public school education system, mm -hmm. and most of the institution, uh, the school district will offer tuition free education to your children. Um, so there isn't much of the tuition cost on that. All you need to carry is the um, living expense. Uh, for uh, younger children, um, if you're not at age to go to kindergarten, you probably need to go to a daycare and that is at students and families, their own expense. Can't hear you. You do have school board uh, uh, options, right? Like uh, close by, which uh, uh, which has which is free. Do they, do they have any free education uh, or very subsidized education, which they could look up? Uh, yes, like I mentioned, if the the uh, students children at uh, kindergarten to grade twelve, they can attend a local public school district uh, tuition free. So one more question which we can pick um, it says which are the job sites which are most useful to check uh, in Canada before they uh, I think this is what they probably mean is they before they start to look for uh, uh, deciding on an institution they want to see whether those programs have any uh, lot of job opportunities available how do they check for those careers so what are the job sites which is the most useful to check in Canada I can answer that as well. Um, feel free to jump in the other colleagues. Um, I think if you really talk to um, 
um, the career professionals, uh, they do suggest that 80% um, of the jobs uh, that were ended hiring is someone that you know or someone you already talked to, to already. So while we do have encouraged students to look on the job sites, but it's very important for students to learn some employment skills, which many of our institutions are offering. You need to um, visit one of the career education center and uh, attend some of the career training workshops. They will be teaching so many skills for you to know how to find a job uh, in Canada. Many of the students we're talking about, don't worry about the experience. Some of you already carry <clears throat> experience to, um, to Canada uh, from your previous working experience in India, or some of the undergraduate student, the school will uh, um, offer you those co-op opportunities. So you will um, have lots of um, opportunity to look, gain working experience. So not to worry about that. And uh, yeah, work with the, the career counselors, uh, career education centers uh, at your institution. There are lots of opportunities. And uh, today I did, um, knowing that I will be talking to the uh, Indian students, uh, I asked my colleague. So what they did was uh, they went on LinkedIn and they did a quick search and uh, look at where our alumni, TRU's alumni is working. And I would like to share with you a little bit of, of uh, their job titles or where do they work to give you a sense. What I'm uh, presenting is not just TRU graduates. It could be coming from any of these inst institutions, the panelist institutions today, but I wanted to show you what an Indian student can do in Canada and be successful uh, in their career. So I will, I can't show you their photos uh, because I don't have their commission, uh, permission yet, but I will quickly announce uh, some of their job titles, okay? So this, sure. this student, this student's name is yeah, uh, Rahu, and he is working in Toronto, um, RBC Direct Investing, and his job is investment consultant equity, and uh, option tra options trader. So I got lots of those. Uh, this student is assistant branch manager at Enterprise. That's a, a car rental company in Kamloops. Uh, this student's self-employed in Burnaby, but he's uh, specialized in marketing, sales, and negotiation. We got this student's very cool. Uh, senior manager, human resource at Williams Lake First Nation. So this is our one of our Indian uh, graduate. Her name's Tanya, and uh, she's an MBA. She's from India. Uh, we got this student working at TD Bank, Personal Banking Associate. We got this student, Provincial Health Service Authority. Thompson Rivers graduates. Uh, she work, he works at Burnaby, and he's category leads strategic sourcing and uh, procurement at the Provincial Health Service Authority. Uh, this is um, this is a match make mar match marketing group, an assistant manager. Uh, this student accounting representative at SSI Macro Limited in Kamloops, uh, Deloitte Canada chartered professional accountants, uh, Best Buy Canada. This is a, this student I know. His name is Milab award-winning digital marketing specialist and work at Best Buy Canada. He's going to move to tr uh, Toronto uh, next month. This is uh, Cara Caravera, uh, RBC, uh, working in Kamloops. Uh, Freeby Gourmet Food Limited, a branch manager in Great Vancouver area. Um, we Are Alberta, owner of We Are uh, Alberta. This is an entrepreneur. Uh, MBA graduates working at um, Interior uh, Island Health, uh, Island Health, Health, sorry, um, GIAC Advisory Board, New Brunswick. Our students are uh, go all the way to the east. Information Security Analyst at Government of New Brunswick, uh, KPMG Canada in Vancouver. Uh, lots of those. I won't finish it uh, for That's the time great. being, but. But those are, those are students, 
that's what you can do. You can, doesn't matter where you studied, you can work anywhere in Canada, you can work on the corporate jobs, management job, retail management, government job, self-employed. Lots of our university employed lots of students as well. So go for it. Like Kim said, follow your dream and make it happen. And, uh, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to welcome you. Thank you. I can also add a little gonga. Um, one, on, on our website, we actually have career opportunities. And under our say our program, like let's say marketing management, if you click on in careers, it'll take you right to job postings. It'll take you right to Indeed is what we use and we link. So if you go in marketing, you'll see jobs that are available in, 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 the, in the area. So first thing will pop up is social media specialists. These are things... So if you want to go on and you want to say, oh, what are the kind of jobs I can get from, from a project manager? You can just go on there and you can go just see the types of opportunities, the real jobs. So when you're ready to apply, you're ready. And we do do, we also have, a, you know, a career coaching, all that support, resume support for our students. So I would say the first day you start your program is the first day of your job in Canada. So how you conduct yourself that first day is how you're going to do the rest of the rest of your career. Okay, so there's just one more question. I think we can. Uh, uh, I think students are since these are all working professionals, and they would be looking at permanent residency, and probably they're looking the study paths for that. The question is that do the universities and colleges have resources or um, RCICs to help students with their uh, all their immigration requirements, like maybe extending a study permit, maybe uh, applying for a post study work, and also planning out their permanent residency pathways. How do how they should apply for? So that is, I think, this is one of the main concerns that they have. So would you all like to say something about it? BCIT, we have several staff members who are. Uh, RCICs. Um, yeah. We do offer services, plenty of services for international students. Um, I, there are limits to how far the staff can go to assist students. We can't help you all the way through your applications, but uh, certainly for providing information and advice, uh, our International Student Centre is <coughs> there to assist you. I'll add at Railroads University, we offer the same, several staff. When it comes to, I think, students visa, that's where you need to seek out uh, a certified immigration consultant, much like uh, Canam has this service. Um, but for all the visa stuff and work permits and questions about that, I'm pretty sure all of us are going to have potentially multiple people on staff. Could we connect? Could we also Sorry, we connect some of us? Yes, you go ahead. Yeah, we also host sessions where the um, the government of Canada representative comes, and and also the province of Manitoba comes, and they deliver a, like a workshop or a seminar for our students, so they can ask them all direct questions. Be again, we we can't do everything. That's where an immigration consultant would come in, but generally we can provide enough guidance for students to make their way. We provide them all the documents they need. So I haven't heard of any major concerns with students not getting the supports they need. That's a good point, Kim. And, and like some of the, the stuff that, that those individuals would do when they come to campus is they talk to students about the PMP program, for example, which most provinces have. And some of the specialized programming uh, that, that's available for students who plan to do their PR. Um, so our RCIC, um, uh, approved uh, advisors go to a point, but as Kim and, and uh, Michael and Brooke are saying, is there, there are others uh, that are, are able to do that. And we bring them in from uh, specialized sources to be able to advise students specifically. Um, at TRU, we do have, I believe, three RACIAS, and we also have two RCIC, and uh, we do run different workshops for um, doing study, study permit, uh, co-op work permit, those uh, extensions or applications, and during COVID, those services are offered virtually online, but uh, we do help students with that a lot. 
famous true at Northeastern, where we do have um, RCICs in both our campuses in Toronto and Vancouver. And once from the time a student is accepted to the university, they will guide them through, through the study process and provide all the immigration uh, support that is required. That's quite uh, quite a universal uh, uh, system, I think. Like most of the universities and colleges seem to be having that, and, and that's something which most students are not aware of. And that's why I wanted to bring that out. So uh, it's quite clear that because I just went through a a, a training session with the University of, uh, sorry with the government of Saskatchewan. They just did a training, and it was all about RCICs. And like of course, Anurag Sandhu himself is an RCIC, but I I was going through that, and and it was quite an eye opener for me when they were saying that universities and colleges do, do have these RISIAs and RCICs and they really go all out to help students as much as possible. So thank you for, uh, inf and students uh, are generally not informed about it. So it was a good thing that you all came out with this information and it's, I'm sure it builds up a lot of confidence among the students that they know where they're going and, and they know there will be some kind of help at hand. So, Thank you all for uh, uh, for answering all the questions. I think with that, we come to the end of the questions. However, students, we want to let you know how much emphasis the Canadian government is placing on work opportunities as part of the government of Canada's efforts to support international students through this challenging time. The Honorable Marco Mendocino, Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship recently announced that former international students who hold or held a postgraduate work permit will have the opportunity to apply for an open work permit valid for 18 months and allow former international students to remain in Canada to continue to seek employment and build their future. Now, as Canada starts to chart its coast, uh, course to recovery post the pandemic, attracting skilled immigrants is a part of their plan. So there are a large number of thank you messages pouring in from the audience in the chat box. And it's my honor to forward them all to our fantastic panel today, who offered great study options to work, working professionals, a category which is generally most neglected. Canam looks forward to continue guiding working professionals with appropriate study options as always, wishing you all the very best. And uh, our final topic for this super successful conclave will start at 6.30 p.m. And the topic is who are authorized consultants, agents, and how does it benefit students to consult them? And also there'll be tips for student visas by IRCC officials. A zillion thanks to all the panelists and thank you greatly to all the students who attended and we welcome you to attend the next session as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Kevin, you've done the needful?